I'm so happy to show you Hot Off the Press's new ethereal bouquets. Now, ethereal means heavenly, and I think, it's, think you can see what's going on in these uh, cream and white florals, as well as the rich backgrounds. So please, come play with us. Well, let me show you an overview of what Teresa has been working with. Well, you saw the 12 by 12 sheets. Now, this has got 12, 12 by 12 sheets, plus 38 cutouts. You get kind of thumbnails of those here. As always, there are card and scrapbook page ideas on the back. There are also the Ethereal Bouquet Solid Card Stock. Now you're gonna get 12 colors on 12 sheets. That's interesting. You'll also have the 31 die cuts. Those are two different sheets. And also the six by six Ethereal Bouquets. Now that has 24 sheets plus 76 cutouts. So you can see it's a miniature version of the 12 by 12. Now let's get started. But I, before we begin, I do wanna share with you an absolutely beautiful scrapbook page. This is on the back of the 12 by 12 pattern cardstock. And this is what I mean by what the ethereal looks like. All of the flowers are this cream or white coloring. The backgrounds are uh, beautiful shades of different colors, but they're perfect for scrapbooking, as you can see here with one of the cutouts that's included. You can add all sorts of embellishments, but let's take a look at what Teresa has done. And here's the first card. As you can see, this is a slim line. We're getting closer so that you have this in a larger view to see all the things that Teresa has created. And as I said, this is a slim line, so it's three and a half by eight and a half. And uh, you can make your own, or we do have these all available with matching envelopes. Now, what Teresa did is she started with this paper. And you can see the 12 by 12. Actually, this is the first one on the package that I showed you. And you can see right here that this is the area that she trimmed out to go onto her card. But before she glued that down, she matted it onto the solid cardstock. And here's what that looks like in larger version. And um, th so she matted it. And then she went into the white ribbon set. And you see, this has got half inch all the way down to these, these smaller um, eighth of an inch and quarter inch and half inch ribbons. So she's got it matted. And then she's taken each of the ribbons and she simply tied a knot at the end. And then she attached them to the paper and then also wrap them around that mat, that solid uh, card stock, and then glued the whole piece to the card. Oh, but wait, I forgot to tell you something, didn't I? You see this ghosted image? Well, that's done with our vellum, and this is our white vellum. We have printed vellums, but this is the white vellum, and it comes in a package with these six by 12 sheets. I think there are six of them, and as you can see, Teresa, cut it down so it is smaller than the paper right there and had that down first, then matted it onto the solid, then did the ribbons, then glued them to the top of her card. So it just creates this ghosted image that is oh so pretty. And it's a great technique really just to do with anything. Now, the happy birthday, where does that come from? Well, it is on the sheet of cutouts. Actually, there's two sheets of cutouts. You can see it right here. It's already matted for you, so just trim it out. It's just straight edges, and she foam taped it on top. Now notice it goes outside just a tad of the card, and that works just fine. Now on the inside of her card, okay. Well, she has used, let me get this out of the way. And so she used this area of the paper in the beginning, but here she just used another area over here. So you can see how easy that is. And then she took two other of the solid colored card stocks and did two mats just on the left hand side. Again, this piece is right here. You can see it on the cutouts. Let me know if you like seeing where these came from when I show you the full sheet. I, I hope that's helpful to you, and that's exactly what I mean it to be, but you tell me what you think, okay? Leave a comment in the, uh, in the comment sections. <laughs> so she has trimmed this out. She's also foam taped it, but then she added words, and the words that she used are from the pack 
It's called Card Inside Outside Dazzles. Now, there is black, white, gold, and silver. This is obviously the white. And the idea is that it will say, you know, like happy birthday, and then the more candles, the bigger the wish. So there's something for the front of the card and the inside of the card. And that is the idea of these dazzles. So you can see how that just plays out so nicely. And that's a lot of dazzles on simply one cutout, but it just does the trick. Okay, so you can see how that white ghosting is played off against the vellum. Okay, let's go into our second card. And this is kind of a different card. I love it when Teresa does this. And this is using the blue paper, but it's also doing an effective way of using the solid cardstock. Now, remember I told you there's 12 sheets and there's 12 colors? Well, that's because on the sheets, you get a you get two colors on each sheet. So on one side, in fact, she does it on this card. See how this is dark, this kind of a darker blue? And on the inside, it's a lighter blue. Well, that just works beautifully for so many things, but this card is one of them. So let me show you what Teresa did. I'm gonna turn this sideways so it shows better on camera. This is a piece of the solid cardstock. It measures at eight and a half by five. Then Teresa simply scored two inches from the left side. Now, it's, we find it easy to use the scoreboard from Hunky Dory. You certainly don't have to, but it's just that it's all right there. And you just pop this off, place it right there, and simply use this uh, tool to just go down the score. And it stays right in the grids, so it just makes it super easy. So it scores it, which means it's going to um, kind of press into the fibers of the paper. It kind of weakens them, which allows you to turn it over and to take your bone folder or that piece that we just used and press down to really make it. This really gives you a good idea of that, the two blues that are on this one sheet and it works just really nicely. So that's what Teresa has done. Now, this card is our standard size. We like to use the five by six and a half inch cards because quite honestly, we like to have more space to create. I hope you agree. If you don't, you can cut it smaller. Now, what Teresa used is going into the six by six papers. So here is the six by six sheet that she used. And as you can tell, let me get it in here, she trimmed the piece to a fit, and it's going to attach on the back of this. So the measurements are in the gallery. This is the back side of it. Again, everything matches. Even the back side will coordinate with the front side. So that works nicely. So she cut this piece, and she wanted to, and so she's cutting it from the left-hand side, okay? So when you see that measurement, that's what you're going to want to do. And she did not attach it yet because you can see that jute is going to go all the way around. And she did take a piece of the paper. So she first cut out this one. It's going to leave a section over here that's empty. And what she did is she used that piece up here on the top part. How clever is that one six by six piece? She's getting two cuts out of it. So she matted that on that light blue on the same cardstock that's used on the inside. And then she placed two thin line dazzles. Now, the thin line that she used is out of the pearl and pastel group. Now, this is the silver that's out of it. These are the pearl finish. Now, if you're wondering, this is the silver pearl. What would the silver regular finish look like? Well, it looks like this. It's a much brighter, shinier. This is pearl, and this is the look that it's going to give. Just um, a muted, a lovely look. So if that's of interest, that's kind of the difference between the two thin line dazzles. So she matted that, glued it down, attached the dazzles at the top and the bottom, and then she took the jute. Now the jute comes with all of these colors, and she pulled out the blue and the tan and the brown, wrap them around and tied them and has got them right there. And then she glued this piece on top of it. So that's 
really going to hold it in place. She used, um, Teresa likes the two-sided tape, and this is what it looks like. It comes in a package like this, and it is adhesive on both sides, and uh, that's what she likes to use, so I just show you that because it's something we have. And also, she did another two rows of the thin line dazzles at the bottom here. Now this is one of the die cuts, and let me just pull that sheet out so you can see it. There's the thank you. It's again already matted for you, and then she foam taped it on top and did a little knotted piece of the three jute colors right there. Foam taped them in place. Now for the inside of her card, well she went to another of the six by six, and this is the card, the paper that she chose, the cardstock she chose. You can see it matches right there. And she matted it on the paper that is in the solid cardstock. And then there are two more of the die cuts. Now let me show you what those look like. In fact, they pop out so easily. <laughs> I have to uh, be careful with them when I'm showing them to you. So you can see the oval. And as you can see, we leave some of these um, just, they're decorated, but they don't have words. Now we do that so that you can do a technique like this. You can overlap them. You could also put dazzles there, as you saw in the first card, or you can stamp, you can computer journal, just whatever you wanna do. In this case, Teresa simply glued this flat down, and then she took the You Are My Hero and foam taped that, and then added a little jute bow right there, and then more of the thin line dazzles crossing at the corner, but just a at one corner. And that finishes that. Just a really nice card, a good thing to remember for the future. Okay, now I have something very clever to show you. And um, let me bring this out. And this is using, of course, more of these uh, pa wonderful papers. But Teresa has also given us a download. Now the download looks like this. Now you just print it out on your eight and a half by 11 paper, which is what your printer has in it, no doubt. And as with all of Teresa's downloads, the, the straight lines are cut lines. The broken lines or dash lines are score lines. So if you print this out, then uh, I'll show you how to place it and get ready to make the, uh, the little technique that I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's take a look at her card. So what we have going on is some pockets, and that's what that download is gonna provide. And the pockets are holding this tag, which is a die cut tag, and it can also hold a gift certificate. So to anywhere. And I thought it was really clever that she wrapped the ribbon around it so it had a little pocket to pull um, at the top and just slide it right in. So here's the front of her card, and here's the inside of her card. Really, really pretty. So that layering is going on. Well, let's start first with the base of her card, okay? So this is out of the green paper. Now this is the back side of this paper. Green on the front, green on the back, okay? And what Teresa has done is again, this is a five by six and a half inch card. And she has taken this paper and simply trimmed it down to fit. She did do some inking and she used the um, seal brown ink with a sponge dauber. And this is the kind that fits over your finger. And you can use blending tools, you can use just anything that you have but it will give just a softer look as you go around the edge of the paper. And that's exactly the technique that she's trying to get and the look she's trying to get. It just adds, it's not as strong as a mat, but it is kind of a ghosted, uh, gentle shading around the edge. There's, there's kind of some already there, but she just extends it with that ink. So. That's number one. Now, we're going to go into this download to get to our double pocket. Now, remember, there's two layers. So, she has taken this, 
And my example here is on solid cardstock, but what Teresa used is this paper. And one thing she mentions is you want to place the pattern. So here's the whole sheet so you can see it, but we're going up to the upper left-hand corner and position this on the paper. I would hold it up to a window and kind of get the edge of the pattern um, aligned with the edge of the paper. Then you can use the um, low tack tape to just hold it together and do your cutting. And then also to you do your scoring and that's where the scoreboard will come in handy too. So what you get is a piece that will look like this as so far as its shape goes. And there are two tabs over here. You might remember seeing them there. And Teresa puts that uh, two-sided tape on the outside of it. And there are the score lines. So the way that this is going to go together is you're going to take these and remove the liner on the tape. And let's just do this. Usually it helps to have fingernails. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to fold that over, make sure it folds down. So you've got this at both ends. Then you flip this up and you have those little finger holes right there. And then you do want to glue those two together so that it stays together. This is going to go on the front of your card. It's a very nice size. Too. So I bet you can use this a lot of places on the front of your card. I think that's really fun. You can also use them on the inside vertically or horizontally. So this is a good little piece to uh, keep in your idea toolkit. Now, as I said, Teresa added the uh, die cuts and this is a cutout from the sheet. So that works nicely and you can see how the coloring works so well. This is one of the long die cuts and let me show you. Here it is, and she simply cut it in half, or you can see how she's measured it there. One longer piece here and a shorter one there. She added a knotted ribbon, so you've got ribbon in three places, which is a good number. That takes care of the front of this, absolutely done. Now for the inside, okay, you remember the front of the card had this? Well, on the other side of it, Teresa has also used the flowers um, to go on the inside so you can see right there that's how they're positioned so you know even with those two pieces being used you're still going to have about half of that sheet left and you've got another one so that works nicely now the cutouts are used right here the cutouts and the uh, die cuts so the let's celebrate that is right here you just saw that a minute ago and the live it up and this piece those are both the cutouts so she's keeping this i think it's interesting because she's using the greens and the browns doing the same greens and browns on the inside and then she pops that pink one just really to give just a pop of color and I thought that was really interesting. Now this is actually stapled on top so you can staple it, you can uh, just glue it, you can do whatever you want. She folded that ribbon and stapled it on top of the tag you could do the same thing under it. But isn't it pretty how the flowers just really support everything and add just a beautiful um, look to it? Okay, I promised you some very different things and here is one. This is such a different card and I have to tell you, I was wondering how did she do that? And let me show you. So she took this sheet, you can see right here, now, when you look at this, I think, oh my gosh, how many papers did she have to use to do that? Well, she used one. She used one, and I was pretty surprised. Now, again, our base is the five by six and a half inch card, okay? So that's number one. Now, let me bring out the pieces that she used because this is not something I would have expected. And I don't want to give it away, but I am going to give it away. So let me take my note off and let me get this all put into place. So she took that piece of cardstock and she cut out the five by six and a half inch piece. 
just as I have it here, okay? Then she went into the set of square and scalloped cutting dies, and she's going to use several of these. Now, she took the largest one, which is right here. This is four and a half inches. She placed it one half inch from the left side. Let me straighten that up for you. And die cut it. Now that's going to give you a piece that looks like this. That piece is cut out, and that's what you cut it out from. But we don't stop there. We're going to put it back in place, and we're going to use the low-tack tape. This is the hunky-dory low-tack tape. You can tell it's hunky-dory because it says hunky-dory all over it. I like the fact that it's purple, and I can find it when it's next to my die-cutting machine. So you're going to put this won't, this'll be one piece, okay? That'll be the piece that you cut out. Now, obviously, I've already cut the second one, but just bear with me. So that was our first cut. Then you take the next one, and you position it two inches from the left edge. Now, the measurement of that one half inch and the two inches is from the edge of that very first piece that we cut. So this goes right here. And you can die cut it going through this whole piece, okay? And then we set it back down. And the last one is three and a quarter inches from the end. Now I'm just going to eyeball this. You do want to have it equal top and bottom. So when you cut this out, you're going to end up getting kind of two pieces. Now, when you're all done, you have these multiple pieces, okay? So what Teresa did, as you can see here, is she simply matted every single one, which gave her a larger image, and then glued the first layer, but foam taped the other two layers on top. And so you have this wonderful, gentle dimension of this piece. And she did it out of one piece of paper, actually one quarter of one piece of paper. I think it's relatively brilliant. So what happens is that, yes, this is down on your card. This matted piece is going to go on top of it. And the mat is going to cover up the hole then the matted piece of this is going to go on top, and then the matted piece of this is going to go on top. I think it's just doggone brilliant. So um, just another way that these nested dies can make it so easy to do and uh, finish our work for us. Uh, it doesn't help to have Teresa in our corner to provide all of those um, techniques and the um, Hunky Dory low tack tape is going to make it easy too. So I'll just get these back onto the piece. Now, so she's done those layers. She's glued it to the top of her card. And um, she has put the Sending You Love, that's a die cut. She's foam taped that on top. And she went into the ivory ribbon where she just knotted it and placed it right there. It just gives a little bit of texture and supports the softness of the colors. Now, for the inside, now she used, <laughs> this is clever, so she used this part in the beginning, right? So uh, on the other side of it, she's going to, or on the inside of it, she goes into uh, the paper and flips it over and uses another piece of it. So let me show you. This is what the whole sheet looks, this is the pieces that are left. And she uses it right there. And you can see how that has placed. She just glues it to this side and this side trims it down. And it just works nicely. This is another time when she added a different color. You see all of the creams and browns. And then here, the same creams and browns, but she adds a pop of blue. Very fun. This is one of the cutouts from the um, paper pack. 
and um, also one of the die cuts. Let me see, it's right here. You're never more than a thought away. That's just perfect any time. And then, as I said, this is one of the cutouts, and it's right here. Simple to cut out, straight lines makes it easy. And again, just a bit of the ivory ribbon works right there. Okay, I have got another card. The woman could not stop, I will tell you. So let me show you this. And this is another fun, very easy to do technique, okay? Now this again is going to go into our cardstock, our double-sided cardstock, and it plays off the idea that it's one color on one side and another color on the other. I want to tell you that was Teresa's idea and we took that idea and ran with it. So this is how this card opens. Let me show you how she did it. So she took the um, double-sided cardstock and she cut a piece that's eight and a half by 11. Then she folded in half horizontally and used the bone folder, opened it up, fold it the other way, use the bone folder again. Then she placed it like this and cut out the top left-hand piece. That is not used in the card. So then you end up having a piece like this. Okay, now because it's double-sided, what's going to happen is this is going to fold in, this piece is going to fold down so that you have this uh, variety of a shape. Now, she used the pink paper. This is the six by six version and she glued it to the front of her card. Now, you want to glue that firmly so that it really is going to adhere because you're going to take the oval cutting dies. They are not nearly placed as lovely as my circle was, but these are the oval and scalloped. And so glue that down, trim the paper, and then run this through your die cutting machine. Open that up and run it through having that big oval to cut out. And I am sure that you are noticing this absolutely beautiful embellishment and easy to do. And it's something I appreciate so much that you can do with our new glitter paper. This is the champagne color. And it's not a gold, it's not a silver, it's kind of in the middle. And look what she has done. So she die cut that oval, and then she took the same cardstock. Remember there was a piece that we cut out? Well, she used that to do two borders, and then she went into the champagne cardstock and used our border slimline dies. Now, they're called slimline dies because they go the whole eight and a half inches of the card, but of course you can use them for anything as is so well demonstrated right here. So she die cut this one out of the champagne glitter cardstock and glued it here. Now, because this has a lot of holes, it's not horribly intricate, but it is intricate. She used a foolproof method and that's what we call sticky specs. So she simply, you get four sheets in this. I have one of them right here. And you simply put your die cut piece right on top of the adhesive part. So you're gonna pull off, pull back the um, liner, place your piece here, and then just gently rub it. Then lift this off and pull your die cut piece off. And when you position it onto your paper, it will stick perfectly. There's no gaps, no oozing glue, and no problem. Now, to go into that absolutely beautiful oval, this is what she's done. She has taken the circle, the little flourish there, also die cut it out of the champagne. My goodness, you've got this out, you might as well use it. And also use the sticky specs to apply that top and bottom. Then she used the oval. Now remember, there's oval and scalloped. So she used the oval on the front. Then she went down to the next smaller scalloped and die cut that out of the champagne. And then she took this die cut and look how perfectly they match. Isn't that nice? And placed that on top. 
and then went into her sheet of cutouts that's in the six by, in fact, there's four sheets, and cut out the smile and shine, foam tape that on top. Isn't that just pretty, but she's not done. Here, she took the piece of um, this front, okay, remember? She used it starting right there. So she had this piece left. Would she throw it away? Of course not. She used it to go right here, just right there. And she did mat it onto the champagne. She added three more of the die cuts. So this little piece, that one that says love you, find your passion, glued them down flat. And you have a bit of just absolutely gorgeousness on every single layer of this beautiful, beautiful card. So easy to do. Well, Teresa, once again, you have pulled it off. It's beautiful. Ethereal means heavenly, and I think that her projects really support that. So we have the Ethereal 12 by 12 pattern cardstock, the Ethereal 12 by 12 solid cardstock. We have the 31 Ethereal die cuts, and the six by six ethereal pattern cardstock, all of those all in today's money saver. By the way, that money saver is on the right side of your screen. You know, you might as well get some savings while you're having fun playing with these. And um, all of the uh, instructions are down below uh, where you're going to see the projects. And down below that, you'll see all the products that are in, in this collection and everything that Teresa used. Thank you so much for being here. Please let me know what you thought of the ethereal bouquets and um, if you like seeing the different pages that Teresa used. And uh, Teresa, thank you so much. And I do want to say thank you for being part of the Paper Wishes family. We'll see you next time.